This video is a follow-on to a previous one about uh, um, using the Fama French industry data to um, just come up with some very basic summary statistics. So in that previous video, this is what we, we had made, in that we have the average monthly return for different industries, we've got the median, the standard deviation of returns, min, max. We were just trying to get a feel for the data and get some practice using Excel. Now. Um, in addition to calculations in Excel, another very common task and one that you need to be proficient in is making uh, plots and making those plots relatively pretty. Now, um, in this plot, um, I, the, the goal here is to, to get you to explore different options and play around with the plotting functions of Excel and to make something that I think is pretty. Um, it's not the the, the the best uh, plot. Um, maybe you can improve on it, but um, it is a very functional plot that gets the, the message across. So what we are going to be doing is we are going to be plotting the um, cumulative uh, value of a thousand dollar investment in this average industry um, portfolio. Now, uh, there's nothing special about this. This is just going to be a, uh, a set of data uh, to give us practice with plotting. Um, but it is going to require a few little tricks. So um, we're going to have to go over to this Excel training data tab. We're going to have to go back to it. And the data that we are going to be using is all the way on the right side. Once again, this was um, the spreadsheet was built in that previous video. And we're going to be using the monthly returns of this industry average, um, which is literally just the average return in that particular month um, of those, uh, um, of those industries. So, um, the goal, um, like I said, is to plot the cumulative value of a thousand dollar investment. So what we're going to be doing is creating a plot like this. Um, we're going to pretend that we invested a thousand dollars in, on January 1st, 1990, and look at how that grows over time on a month to month basis. Um, important elements of this plot are that it's labeled what it is, that our, our y-axis over here is also labeled in that we have dollar value. The numbers here have dollar signs and um, the units don't have like superfluous uh, decimals after it. I mean, I don't really care that uh, that's dot zero zero. That's not important. So we're going to make sure that that's pretty. Also, the dates are um, arranged, obviously, in the chronological order, but also we don't have like weird uh, units of time such as six or like nine month units. Um, uh, we've got them labeled on a annual basis as of January 1st of that year. Um, so this is the, the, the end goal, and what we're going to need is the dollar value every particular month of this of a portfolio that invested $1,000 in this, um, this average industry portfolio. So the, the first thing we're going to need to do is to create a new spreadsheet, and we're going to just label this one uh, the cumulative return data. Um, because that's what we're trying to do. Now, um, to keep things simple and to get around some um, some complications that we're going to have to overcome, we're going to copy over the date. And then we're also going to copy over these average industry returns. Now, um, we're going to have to do this a little bit carefully because if you remember, those, um, those average returns were a formula, and we don't want that formula to, to get all weird, so we just have to paste the values, um, which is under paste special. Okay, now that we have this, uh, the, the raw data, um, let me just format it here just to keep things uh, relatively pretty. We've got to um, uh, overcome a problem. And that problem here is the date. Um, the date is not very uh, conducive to analysis. 
Um, if you remember that the, the format of this date is year, 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 month, month. So this date right here, that very first one is January of 1990. Now, um, we need to turn this into a proper date in Excel. And in particular, we're going to need to have the date of uh, the end of the month of, in this particular case, January 1990. So the, the goal here is to have a column with the date of the end of the month. Um, so what we'll hope to have here is January 31st, 1990. Now, I guess a, a silly way to do this would be to, to punch all the, the numbers in um, manually. But that gets kind of um, tedious if you're going to do it 351 times. And realistically, if you had daily return, or well, if you had a much longer time series, this would be kind of problematic. Um, so uh, there might be many ways around this, tr or this problem, but I'm just going to show you one. So what we're going to do here is we're going to create a year column, a month column, and these are going to extract the year and the month of, um, of the date. So to do this, we're going to have to use a function called floor, which, um, as the description says, rounds a number down to the nearest integer or the nearest multiple of significance. So what we're going to do is we are going to divide this number by 100. And that is going to give us just the year. So we're dividing one, uh, what is that? Uh, 199,001 by 100, and then it's rounding that down to the nearest integer. Now, we also need to get the month. And what we can do is we can take the date, which is just a number, and then subtract off the year times 100. And so now we have the month. And then, sorry, I'm also going to freeze that top row just so I know what I'm working with. Now, uh, a, a trick or something that we need to overcome here is we want the date to be the last day of the month because this return of negative 7.2% is the return over that entire month. So we, uh, to overcome this, we're going to create what I'm going to call the fake date. This is just a, a temporary column that, um, that will allow us to, to do a trick here. So what we're going to do is we're going to say we're going to use the date function, and then we are going to have the year, the month, and then the reason I'm calling this as a fake day is we're just going to say this is the date of the beginning of the month. Um, this is the first day of the month. Now, every month, this is going to sound a little uh, ridiculous, but every month has a first day, but not every month has the exact same last day. Some months have, you know, 30 days, some have 31. Uh, February is always tricky. Um, so we're just going to create this fake date at the beginning of every month. So um, once again, we copy this all the way down. And just as an FYI, if um, you're not overly familiar with Excel, when you get something like this of just the, the pound signed over and over again, it just means that um, things are not, or the, the column is not wide enough to display the data. Okay, so what we need to do now is um, we need to find out what the end of the month is for this um, for this uh, for this month of January 1990, and conveniently um, uh, we can use a sort of a, a, an opaque formula in that we can go um, actually let me do this days in month. So we're trying to find the days in the month. So there's two formulas that we're going to be using. There's this um, end of month function, which returns the serial number of the last day of the month before or after a specified number of months. Um, we're also going to um, use a, the day function, which returns the day of the month, um, a number from 1 to 31. We're going to use these two together. 
So the formula that we're going to use is the uh, the day, um, and then we are going to say this end of month, which is going to give us the last day of the the month um, after a certain number of months. We're going to say, all right, what is the last day of the month um, after zero months after January 1990? So we're saying, hey, we know this, this formula uh, gives us the last day of the month um, for a certain number of months in the future from January 1990. Well, zero months from January 1990 is January 1990. Um, and actually, let me delete this day. Uh, function just to show you what this gives you. So this gives you the last day of the month in Excel's um, internal um, uh, numbering system. And I, I forget what uh, the origin date in um, Excel for Word is, but or sorry, Excel for um, PC is, but this is just counting from some specified origin date the number of days after that. This number isn't particularly useful. We want to turn this into a day. So this is where that day function comes in. And what the using this formula of day, um, end of a month, and just looking zero months in advance, we can find out that there's 31 days in the month of January 1990. So we're going to drag that down. And as you can see, and this is what makes it uh, really, really handy, is we have the exact last day of every month. And it automatically takes care of like um, of February, um, whether you've got 30 days or 31 days. Um, it's just very convenient. Okay, so now we uh, need to put all of these together and come up with the real date, the actual date. So the date here is we're going to use that actual date function with the year, the month, and the day. And now we have the date of the last day of the month. OK, final step to, um, to putting together this cumulative return plot is to actually calculate the cumulative returns. Um, so what is the dollar value of a certain investment uh, over the, starting at uh, January 1st, uh, 1990 through the end of the data series? So um, it's best practices to um, sort of create a, um, a, a separate cell with your initial investment, just in case you want to play around with it a bit later. So I'm going to go over here and say, our initial investment is going to be $1,000. So let's suppose that we invested $1,000 in um, January 1st of 1990. At the end of the month, so on January 31st, 1990, we're going to have that $1,000 initial investment, and I'm going to lock this cell down. And that's going to have grown, or in this case, lost some value by one plus this negative 7.2%, but we need to turn that into a decimal. So we divide it by 100. And we're going to have found out that the that initial $1,000 investment would have dropped in value to 928-ish dollars. Okay, so let's make that a little bit prettier as a number. And that is our dollar value. Now, the second cell, um, we don't want to, to use that initial investment uh, circle. We want to say, okay, at the end of January, we take this $927 um, and reinvest it over the month of February in 1990. So what we're going to do here is we're going to say, hey, from the previous month, we're going to invest that. And the return over this particular month is going to be 1 plus this 1.9% divided by 100. So we can have it in decimal form. And we're going to see that this $927.97 grew to $945. And that's because that overall portfolio grew 1.9%. 
So we're going to just drag this down at that point, and that's really convenient. And now let's make it a little bit prettier. We're, I'm just copying and pasting the formats here. This, um, Just overall, this paste special um, uh, way of doing stuff, whether you're um, using formats, values, transposing, whatever, it's, it's a super convenient way to, um, to work with your spreadsheet. Okay. So the, the end goal here is to um, create this cumulative return plot. We're going to be using these two columns, H and I. Um, we have the date and we have the cumulative return. Now, the actual um, uh, uh, plotting we're going to use is going to be, and this is where I always get a little bit confused because the, 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 the numbers aren't exactly clear, we're not going to use this insert um, the scatter plot. What we want is a time series. And this we can get from this line command. I believe this is correct. Once again, this is something you just need practice with. Um, hmm. I think last time I did recommended chart. Oh, actually, this is the easiest way. If you don't use Excel on a daily basis to plot, um, it... Uh, um, well, it's kind of uh, confusing because of all the options. And that's actually um, why you need practice using these, well, these different options. So we actually want to move this over to its own sheet um, just uh, to, to keep things clean. Um, and once again, and this is where it gets a little bit embarrassing, there's just so many options that if you don't use this on a daily basis, um, it, I don't know, it, there's, you just have to, to, to practice. So, um, this is the basic sheet, um, or the basic plot, but you can see that the, the labels over here are kind of messy with, uh, some extra decimal places, the dates down at the bottom, we've got January 1st, and then we've got, um, I, I guess that would be September 1st and then May 1st and then January 1st. So there, it's just weird units. We don't have a, a good title here. We don't have our um, y-axis labeled. Um, but this is a good jumping off point to, to fix that. So what I'm going to, to ask you to do is to actually just format this so that it looks like this with um, nice columns, a, or sorry, um, nice labels such as the x-axis, the y-axis over here, give it a title, and um, go from there. So I think the best way to do this is to actually just play around with the different options for, um, for Excel. Um, some of them, oops. And once again, this is where things just, you need practice. So we can format axes over here. So it's going to be a lot of clicking on stuff or and working through these different options just to, to play with it. Um, or uh, if we go over to design, we can add a chart element such as an access title um, um, or, well, whatever we want. So um, uh your job now is to make this plot look like this plot. It shouldn't be that difficult, but it will give you good practice.